We're going to take the derivative of this thing. We got the quotient rule mixed with the chain rule. This is what we're going to do. We're going to start off by saying that y prime is equal to, uh, well, it's overall the quotient rule. Uh, the quotient rule says take the bottom one as it is. So the bottom one as it is is just x squared plus 3x times the derivative of the top. Well, the square root of 2x plus 4 is 2x plus 4 raised to the 1 half. The derivative of that, well, it's the chain rule. I put the power in the front. I copy the base the way it is, and I subtract one from the power. Well, if it was raised to the one half, I subtract one, it'd be raised to the negative one half. And then I, I tack on the derivative of the base. The derivative of the base would be two, okay? So again, quotient rule, says the bottom one as it is times the derivative of the top minus the top one as it is. And I'm just gonna leave it in the form that we have right there. Two X plus four raised to the one half, it's the same thing times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom would be 2x plus 3. And we got that thing all over the bottom piece squared. So it's x squared plus 3x raised to the quantity squared. Okay, now this is the main reason why I made this video. I want you to have this in your algebra bag when you're doing calculus, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this two and one half because I'm multiplying a half times two, the twos would cancel. Great. Now, I see this 2x plus 4 and this 2x plus 4. It's something in common that I could factor out, okay? So I'm going to just put that right here. So I'm going to get the, what is that, 2x plus 4. But remember, it's just algebra. If I'm factoring it out, I have to bring the smallest power in the front. We're comparing negative 1 half to 1 half. The smallest power would be negative 1 half. Okay. Now, all we got to do now is put the rest of the problem in, okay? So... I pulled out 2x plus 4 raised to the negative 1 half. Well, that means I pulled out this whole thing. The only thing left right there was it being multiplied by x squared plus 3x. Now, here's the tricky part. <clears throat> right here, I have 2x plus 4 raised to the 1 half, but I factored out the negative 1 half. What would be left over? That's the question. Okay, so what we're going to do is off to the side, is we're going to talk about what we just did. Well... We factored out the smallest one, but let's think about how that would work in terms of algebra. Let's make up an example here. Let's say I have, I don't know, I have x to the fourth plus x to the sixth. Now out of these two, I could factor out an x to the fourth power. That's what they both have in common. Well, what would be left over? Well, there would just be a one right here, but if I have x to the sixth and I factor out x to the four, Remember, I'm taking that power minus this one, and that's what would be left over. So again, you're taking that and you're subtracting the smallest one. Well, why am I saying that? Because we're gonna do the same thing over here. We have one half minus a negative one half. And we can write that out. We have one half minus a negative one half. Well, the minus and the minus become a plus. That gives me a one. That means this thing is now raised to the first power. Very important step, you always wanna remember that. And then we have this thing right here, that's two X plus three. And then we still have this thing all over the bottom thing squared. So that's X squared plus three X raised to the second power. Okay, so now at the top, what I wanna do is I notice that this thing right here is raised to the negative one half power. Well, what I could actually do is just put that thing at the bottom so I don't have to deal with it anymore, okay? So again, it's raised to the negative uh, one half. I'm gonna put that at the bottom. That would be two X plus four. Down here would be positive, it's the same thing. And I might as well just put that thing down there with it as well, since I'm on this part right here. At the top, I have X squared plus three X and then it's minus, and if I multiply that out, I would get 4x squared plus 14x plus 12, okay? Now, all we have to do is do a little simplifying, and we would have the final answer. So we have that y prime is equal to, okay? Well, I have x squared minus 4x squared. That's going to give me a negative 3x squared. Then I have 3x minus 14x. That's going to give me a negative 11x. And then I have a negative times a positive. That's going to give me a negative 12. At the bottom, I just have this. That's 2x plus 4 times x squared plus 3x 
raised to the quantity squared, and we have the derivative to this problem.